announced that Jerron Ennis is going to be taking on Real Mon uh, Vila, a guy who beat Rashidi Ellis. A lot of people thought Rashidi Ellis uh, won that fight, um, despite kind of, you know, jogging on the back half of that fight, and Vila got a knockdown or whatever. But, you know, Vila came on strong. Those come forward, uh, aggressive fighters. You can't move against them for 12 rounds unless your conditioning is just so great where you can outbox them for 12 rounds. More than like, likely, you know, a knockdown, you know, a, a judge favoring uh, them coming forward, making the fight. A lot of times that tends to make the difference. All right. So. But let's talk about it. Check out the boxing playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. It's more likely thought that he could fight July 22nd or something right there. Um, they move it up to July 20. July 8th at the Borgata Hotel in Atlantic City. I might consider going to that. If I can't get out to Spencer Crawford, I might consider going out to that. Um, but it's a good fight, and I'm just trying to tell you what I kind of think about what's going to happen. Just I haven't seen a lot of Roman Vila, but I got an 87% knockout ratio. It's one loss was to a guy in Mexico, I think, who now who had six losses at the time, had seven in a split decision. So... I'm not sure if they fought in Mexico or not, but uh, Vila's from, uh, I think it's Riamon Vila. He's from uh, Colombia in crack. So um, I done seen Boots get touched up a little bit. But then again, when you throw punches, you're going to get touched. That's just boxing. You know, people talking about how great the fighter Pernell Whitaker was, and the great defensive fighter. He was on the canvas, but guess what? Pernell wasn't select, you know, he wasn't, you know, conservative with his punches. He threw a lot of punches. You know, he threw a lot of punches. Think about Floyd when he went up to 47. You know, he was in higher. He was a more a precise puncher. He was an accurate puncher, counter puncher. But he wasn't, the volume wasn't there. And that's why people wanted to see Floyd kind of, you know, step over, you know, throw them combinations he used to throw and get guys out of there and try them. But he said, I couldn't. My hand's fucked up. I can't do it. So that's why he focused more on accuracy than volume. But in early his career, he he had he had the hands and you know his hand health was able to put those punches in bunches and he was able to use those angles to get guys out of there. I think it was more about the hands than the legs. Uh, it's the hand injury. So uh, Ruben Vila, uh, it's a good test for him. Um, you know he ain't gotta find him in the ring. And the thing for Ruben Vila is he gonna have to survive the first uh, the first part of that fight. The first. 25% of that fight, the first 50% of that fight, and if he can get that fight to around 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, then he can start closing the distance on, on Jerron Ennis, and that's what it's going to boil down to, how quick he going to close the distance, and I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure where he fought that Mexican guy, but I'm pretty sure he's been in enemy territory, and it's going to be loud in there, it's going to be a pro boots crowd, Philadelphia right next to Jersey, um, it really ain't been no great fights there since Artur Gotti, Bernard Hopkins, Kelly Pavlik, they used to fight off in there. I think uh, Andre Ward for Carl Frosch at the boardwalk. So, yeah, Atlantic City is supposed to be like the Nevada or the East Coast. Um, I don't think it ever really materialized into that. Um, and maybe that was because of because um, maybe that was kind of because they didn't really put the money and the infrastructure in Jersey like that. But a lot of people still go to gamble. But I think and also the, the structure of the police, you know, they got bad prostitution there, too. I mean, you got to remember, too, everything in Las Vegas is, you know, it's pretty much legal. And in Jersey, I mean, you're right next to New York. So a lot of things they kind of a little bit selective on in Jersey. So, you know, Atlantic City would have to be like they would have to li literally, you know, decriminalize a lot of bullshit there for it to get to that Vegas level. And then the infrastructure or the, the buildings would have to be a lot different. They would have to add more things there and try to get more pro teams in Jersey and kind of kind of be that that. A lot of things had just cleaned up, so they just like the piss poor version of uh, Las Vegas, just because of the money and and, and then the, a lot of things legal in Vegas that it's hard to legalize. You know, when you off that that water, that major, was they off the Atlantic Ocean, not too far off that, and you next to New York, where they so soft and stuff, and they so liberal with their laws, and obviously with the mob and that shit, they had to be back in the day. But um, so that most people just tend tend to go, you know, Barclays, Master Square Garden. But, you know, some great fights in the uh, in Atlantic City. Um, but I, I do think this fight is kind of going to be interesting here. 
And it's going to be interesting, basically, because Roman Vila is going to have to make it. He going to have to survive early, or he got to start close. He got to start quick. Yeah, he either got to he got to start quick, or he got to survive and then come on hot early. And I think if he gonna take his time early, then he gonna have to go. He gonna he gonna let Boost T off on him. And I think you know if you gonna try to let Boost T off on your guard, got to be tight and you got to be prepared to counter punch. And I think you got to be prepared to go to his body. You know, I think got to be a healthy dosage of counter punching to the body and counter punching upstairs and slowing him down. They got to have like a three or four part plan, you know, and if, you know, you get in a position where you want to start quick, then you just want to rip the body. That's what we focusing on. We're not focusing on the head. We focusing on the jab to the chest. We focus on liver shots, punches to the heart. Um, you know, we focusing on, you know, shoe shining to the body. You know, and we focusing on taking it to him and, and taking the ear off the tire so he ain't got them spring in his legs. You got to remember, he ain't really went a hard 12 yet. So that body work, you know, I think he got to rip it. And I think also when Boots don't, when Boots is defensively compromised because he's an offensive fighter. You know what I'm saying? So with that being the case, with being, you know, compromised, guess what? When he going to be offensive, then you got to take advantage of those things and not bring his hands home or punching. He got to be prepared to catch a shooter punch with him. And um, I seen that Thomas DeLorme was aiming to the top of the head into the temple. And he caught him and kind of rocked his world. And one thing about counter punching is that make it so deadly. If you a heavy handed fighter or you a puncher and you can counter punch, that's the deadliest combination, in my opinion. And box is more deadly than being have, having fast hands of power because, you know, fast hands of power, you kind of can brace for it, cover it up a little bit. It's dangerous, too. But counter punching, especially if you're accurate with it. So. When you can get when you counter punch somebody, if you ever play like Fight Night or something like that, when you counter punch, it's kind of that flash of light come. You're not bracing for it when you counter punch. So when you get hit with a good shot that you don't see coming, and you able to eat it and keep coming, to me that's the true sign of having a great chin. The shots that you don't see coming is the ones that can get you. You know that you ain't bracing for. It. So if you can be if you can counter punch with Vila's punching power, he got a great chance of upsetting the apple cart. So he either go either come out quick. And take it to him, work the body, you know, break him down that way, close the gap, put it, put his back on the ropes. Or you're going to come out with a plan in which, you know, they're going to fill him out. Guard got to be tight. Try to counter punch him or take the air out the tires here and there. And then, you know, as the tires start turning to fight going on, then, you know, he's going to have to pick up his jab. The jab is essential when you're throwing a guy like Boots who likes to throw from the hip and throw from different angles. And he likes to throw a lot of different shots and he likes to do some unconventional things. Kind of where I kind of have made the Roy Jones comparison. Not saying that he is Roy Jones. Roy was a superhero, one of my favorite fighters of all time. But uh, I think the true testament of of, of offset and that is kind of what Montel Griffin did for uh, versus him in the first fight. Just use your jab. When you got somebody that's unconventional, throwing punches from the hip, using different angles, just use your jab and hit the body. You know, go the back. You know, when you up jab. When you down jab. When you confuse jab. When you on when you on point, know what you need to do. Don't forget the jab. When in doubt, jab. Old saying in boxing. So, you know, I think the jab is going to be a key. I, I can't get out of here without giving y'all the jab and body work approach. The jab has got to be key in this fight. He got a jab. And if he don't come out there and jab, he going to get cream. But, yeah, he got a jab. He either got to come out quick, like I said. Have a plan, like I said. But uh, whatever he do, he going to have to jab. And that's going to offset a lot of things that, you know, uh, Jerron Ennis do, and it's going to push him to the ropes a lot more as well, too. And him getting to the ropes, you controlling the distance and the jogger fight, then he can tee off the way he needs to tee off, so. Yeah, but for Jerron Ennis, how I really think it's going to go. Everybody talking about Ennis look bad versus Karen, Trekovich, and all that. He going to come out here and knock this guy out. I think it's going to be like four to six round fight. He's going to come out here and knock this guy out. Might be a premature stoppage. But I think that for this guy, how he did with C.D. Ellis and how he was getting boxed, now you got a guy that's going to come forward. You're going to have Jerron Ennis. He's got Taylor made for, for him early on. Now, if they get later in the fight, then we're going to really see boots made up. And, you know, Ruben Vila start coming on hot, digging in his ass paws down the stretch then but he need that type of fight to get to the championship level and prove his championship worth but in my opinion i think he'll go out there 
He gonna style on him. He gonna groove on him. And I think it's gonna be a four to six round fight. He gonna get him out of there, and everybody gonna jump back on this uh, dick again. Pause. And talk about how great he is. And Virgil can't fuck with him, especially if Virgil have a questionable fight with uh, Stay Honest. And I think this these fights on the same night. I think uh, Stay Honest and, and Virgil Ortiz fight July eighth too. So that was that was fucked up by 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 by, uh, by Showtime. They could have pushed it, but then again, Frank Martin fighting July 15th, and then July 22nd, do you really want to put a fight? I think either Martin fighting July 15th or the 20, July 22nd. I think it's the 15th, then July 22nd, do you really want to put a fight the week before Crawford and Spence? So, I'm not, I don't know what's planned. So, yeah, they fighting on the same night. And no, they not going to line them niggas both up to fight each other, regardless of the belts available or not. You ain't going to see Boots and Virgil fight each other, because uh, they both going to win. Until at 54 60. Trust me, they're going to build this shit up. People say, oh, I just want Crawford and Spence to get out the way. They're going to build that shit up the same way. Watch what I tell you and drag their feet on it. But I expect Boost to get them out of there fairly quickly. I think it's like I said, it's going to be a four to six round fight. But he need he need Ruben Vila to come in tough and the first defense of his interim WB, IBF title and take him some rounds. But hey, check out the welterweight boxing talk playlist. Check out the boxing playlist. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe button, it's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance to get notifications. We go live or drop video. Financially, you want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313, Venmo, CJ Good 313, PayPal, link description. All that's in the link tree. Don't forget to hit the link tree. Find me on TikTok, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Peace.